ओम भूरे भुव स्वह तत्सुर्वरेण्यम भर्गो दीवीम धियो यो न प्रचोदया शांति 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 नमस्कार माई डियर फ्रेंड्स दिस इज ट्वेल्थ वीडियो ऑन टॉक्स विद स्वामी विवेकानंदा ए डायरेक्ट डिसाइपल ऑफ भगवान श्री रामाकृष्ण परमहंस दिस वीडियो स्टार्ट्स विद चैप्टर थर्टी सिक्स स्वामी विवेकानंद वंडरफुल मेमोरी हिज ओपिनियन अबाउट भारत चंद्रा एंड माइकल मधुसूदन दत्त टू बेंगाल पोइट्स प्लेस बेलूर मठ ईयर नाइनटीन हंड्रेड वन Swami ji is in different health in different health at the earnest request of Swami Niranjana Nanda he has been taking Kaviraj medicines for 6 or 7 days according to this treatment the drinking of water is strictly forbidden he has to appease his thirst with milk <coughs> the disciple has come to the mat early in the day shivami ji on seeing him spoke with affection oh you have come well done i was thinking of you disciple i hear that you are living on milk for the last 6 or 7 days shivami ji yes at the earnest entreaty of niranjan i had to take to this medicine i cannot disregard their request disciple you were in the habit of taking water too frequently how could you give it up altogether swami ji when i heard that according to this treatment water had to be given up i made a firm resolve immediately not to take water now the idea of drinking water does not even occur to the mind disciple the treatment is doing you good i hope swami ji that i don't know i am simply obeying the orders of my brother disciple ji <coughs> disciple i think that indigenous drugs such as the vedas use are very well suited to our constitution swami ji my idea is that it is better even to die under the treatment of a scientific doctor than expect recovery from the treatment of laymen who know nothing of modern science but blindly go by the ancient books without gaining a mastery of the subject even though they may have cured a few cases shivami ji cured certain diseases one of which was prepared with vermicelli When the disciple who partook of it asked Swami Ji what it was, he replied, "It is a few English earthworms which I have brought dried from London." This created a laughter among those present at the expense of expense of, uh, expense of the disciple. Despite his spare food and scanty sleep, Swami Ji is very active. A few days ago, a new set of Encyclopedia Britannica had been bought for the matter. Seeing the new shining volumes, the disciple said to Swami Ji, <coughs> "It is almost impossible to read all these books in a single lifetime." He was unaware that Swami Swami Ji had already finished ten volumes and had begun the eleventh. Swami Ji, what do you say? Ask me anything you like from these ten volumes, and I will answer you all. The disciple asked in wonder, "How have you read all these books, Swami Ji? Why should I ask you to question me otherwise?" Being examined, Swami Ji reproduced not only the sense, but at the place the very language of the difficult topic selected from each volume. the disciple astonished to put aside the book saying this is not within human power swami ji do you see simply by the observance of strict brahmacharya continence all learning can be mastered in a very short time one has an unfailing memory of what one hears or knows but once it is owing to this want of continence that everything is on the brink of ruin in our country disciple <coughs> whatever you may say 
Sir, the manifestation of such superhuman power cannot be the result of mere brahmacharya, something else there must be. Swamiji did not say anything in reply. Then Swamiji began to explain lucidly to the disciple the arguments and conclusions about the difficult points in all philosophies. In course of the conversation, Swami Brahmananda entered the room and said to the disciple, You are a nice man. Swamiji is unwell and instead of trying to keep his mind cheerful by light talk, you are making him talk incessantly, raising the most abstruse subjects. <clears throat> the disciple was abashed, but Swamiji said to Swami Brahmananda, Keep your regulation of Kavira's treatment aside. These are my children, and if my body goes in teaching them, I don't care. After this, some light talk followed. Then arose the topic of the place of Bharat Chandra in Bengali literature. From the beginning, Swamiji began to ridicule Bharat Chandra in various ways and satirized the life, manners, marriage, customs, and other usages of the society at the time of Bharat Chandra who was an advocate of child marriage and expressed the opinion that the poems of Bharachandra being full of bad taste and obscenities had not found acceptance in any cultured society except in Bengal. He said it should be guarded that such books do not come into the hands of boys. Then raising the topic of Michael Madhusudan Dutt, he said, that was a wonderful genius born in your province. There is not another epic in Bengali literature like the um, Meghnath Bad. No mistake in that, and it is difficult to come across a poem like that in the whole of modern European literature. Disciple, but sir, I think Michael was very fond of bombastic style. Swamiji, well, if anybody in your country does anything new, you at once hold him. First examine well what he, what he is saying, but instead of that, the people of the country change after anything which is not quite after the old moves. For example, for example, first examine well that he is saying, but instead of that, the people of the country will chase after anything which is not quite after the old modes. For example, in order to bring to ridicule this Meghnath Bad Kavya, which is the gem of Bengali literature, the parody of Chachandri. Bad Chachandri Bad Kavya, the death of a mole was written. They may caricature as much as they like, it does not matter. But the Meghnath Bad Kavya still stands unshaken in its reputation like the Himalayas, while the opinions and writings of carping critics who are busy picking holes in it have been washed away into oblivion. What will the vulgar public understand of the epic Michael has written in such a vigorous diction and an original meter? And at the present time, Grish Babu is writing wonderful books in a new meter which your otherwise pundits are criticizing and finding fault with. But does GC care for that? People will appreciate the books afterwards. Thus, speaking on the subject of Michael, he said, Go and get the Meghnath Badkave from the library downstairs. On the disciples bringing it, he said, Now read. Let me see how you can read it. The disciple read a portion, but the reading not being to the liking of Swamiji, he took the book and showed him how to read and asked him to read again. Then he asked him, now can you say which portion of the Kave is the best? The disciple failing to answer Swami, Swamiji said, that portion of the book which describes that Indrajit has been killed in battle and Mandodri beside herself with grief is dissuading 
Ramana from the battle, but Ramana casting off forcibly from his mind the grief for his son is firmly resolved on battle like a great hero and forgetting in a fury of rage and vengeance all about his wife and children is ready to rush out for battle. That is the most finely conceived portion of the book. Some come what may, I shall not forget my duty, whether the world remains or dissolves. These are the words of a great hero. Inspired by such feelings, Michael has written that portion, saying the Swamiji opened the particular passage and began to read it in the most impressive manner. Chapter 37 why Atma is not perceived, though so very near on self-realization, all questionings cease. Mother Kali, place Balurmat, year 1901. Why Atman is not perceived, though so very near on self-realization, all questioning sees Mother Kali, place Balurmat, year 1901. Swamiji is much better under the Kaviraj treatment, the disciple is at the mat. While attending on Swamiji, he asked, the Atman is all pervading, the very life of the life of all beings, and so very near still, why is it not perceived? Swamiji, do you see yourself that you have eyes? When others speak of the eyes, then you are reminded that you have got eyes. Again, when dust or sand enters into them and, set up and sets up an irritation, then you feel quite well that you have got eyes. Similarly, the realization of this universal Atma which is inner than the innermost is not easily attained. Reading from scriptures or hearing from the lips of the perceptor, one has some idea of it. But when the hard lashes of the bitter sorrow and pain of the world make the heart sore, when on the death of one's near and dear relatives, man thinks, help, thinks himself helpless, when the impenetrable and insurmountable darkness about the future life agitates his mind, then does the jiva pant for a realization of the Atma. Therefore is sorrow helpful to the knowledge of the Atma, but one should remember the bitter lessons of experience. Those who die merely suffering the woes of life like cats and dogs are then the man. He is a man who, even when agitated by the sharp interaction of pleasure and pain, is discriminating and knowing them to be of an evanescent nature, becomes passionately devoted to the Atma. This is all the difference between man and animal. That which is nearest is least observed. The Atma is the nearest of the near. Therefore, the careless and unsteady mind of man gets no clue to it. But the man who is alert, calm, self-restrained and discriminating ignores the external world and diving more and more into the inner world realizes the glory of the Atma and becomes great. Then only he attains to the knowledge of the Atma and realizes the truth of such scriptural text as I am the Atma, thou art that, O Svetketu, and so on. Do you understand, disciple? Yes, sir. But why this method of attaining self-knowledge through the path of pain and suffering? Instead of all this, it would have been well if there had been no creation at all. We were all at one time identified with the Brahma. Why then this desire for creation on the part of the Brahma? 
why again this going forth of the jiva who is no other than brahma along the path of birth and death amidst the introduction of the divinities of life swami ji when a man is intoxicated he sees many hallucinations but when the intoxication goes off he understand them as the imagination of a heated brain whatever you see of this creation which is without a beginning but has an end is only an effect of your state of intoxication when that passage of such questions will not arise at all disciple then is there no reality in the creation and preservation etc of the universe swami ji why should not there be so long as you identify yourself with the body and have the ego consciousness all this will remain but when you are bereft of the body consciousness and devoted to the atma and live in the atma then with respect to you none of these will remain and such questions as whether there is any creation or birth or death will have no room then you will have to say कैगतम केन वितम कुत्रोन्मद जगत अधुन भयादृष्ट नास्ति किम भैदुत वेर इज इट गॉन बै हूम इज इट टेकन वेर इन इज द वर्ल्ड मर्ज्ड इट वॉज जस्ट ऑब्जर्व बै मी एंड इज इट नॉन एक्जिस्टेंट नव वॉट ए वंडर विवेका चूड़ामणि disciple if there is no knowledge of the existence of the universe how can it be said where in is the world merged swami ji because one has to express the idea in language therefore that mode of expression has been used the author has tried to express in thought and language about the state where thought or language cannot reach and therefore he has stated the fact that the world is wholly unreal in a relative mode like the above the world has no absolute reality which only belongs to brahma which is beyond the reach of mind and speech say what more you have to ask today i will put an end to all your arguments the bell of evening service in the worship room rang at the time and everybody made for it but the disciple stayed in swami ji's room noticing which swami ji said won't you go to the worship room disciple i would like to stay here swami ji all right after some time the disciple looking outside of the room said it is the new moon night and all the quarters are over spread with darkness it is the night for the worship of mother kali swami ji without seeing anything gazed at the eastern sky for some time and said do you see what a mysterious and solemn beauty there is in this darkness seeing this and continuing to look at the dense mass of darkness he stood and rapt after some minutes had passed swami ji slowly began to sing a bengali sing o oh, mother in deep darkness flashes thy formless beauty etc after the song swami ji entered his room and sat down with an occasional word like mother mother or kali kali on his lips on easy at swami ji's profoundly abstracted mood the disciple said now sir please speak with me swami ji smilingly said can you fathom the beauty and profundity of the atma whose eternal manifestation is so sweet and beautiful the disciple with wished for a change of topic noticing which swami ji began another song of kali o oh mother thou flowing stream of nectar in how many forms and aspects dost thou play in manifestation after the song he said this kali is the brahma in manifestation have not it you heard sri rama krishna's illustration of the snake moving and the snake at rest representing the dynamic and stating aspects of the same thing 
disciple yes sir shivami ji this time when i get well i shall worship the mother with my heart's blood then only will she be pleased your raghunandan also says like that the mother's child shall be a hero a mahavira in unhappiness sorrow death and desolation the mother's child shall always remain fearless chapter 38 wanted a saturday band of young men ready to sacrifice all for others manly manly less men like less should be the ideal remedy against low spirits and weakness of mind work for others no individual liberation before the salvation of all influence of thoughts place melur belur mat year 1901 swami ji is staying at the mat nowadays his health is not very good but he goes out for a walk in the morning and evening the disciple after going at the feet of swami ji inquired about his health swami ji well this body is in such a pitiable condition but none of you are stepping forward to help in my work what shall i do single handed this time the body has come out of the soil of bengal <clears throat> so can it bear the strain of much work you who come here are pure souls and if you do not be my helpers in this work what shall i do alone disciple sir these self sacrificing brahmans cheering and sanyasins are standing behind you brahmacharins and sanyasins are standing behind you and i think that each one of them can devote his life to your work still why do you say so shivami ji well i want a band of young bengal who alone are the hope of the country my hope of the future lies in the youth of character intelligent renouncing all for the service of others and obedient who can sacrifice their lives in working out of my ideas and thereby do good to themselves and the country at large otherwise boys of the common run are coming in groups and will come dullness is written on their face their heart is devoid of energy their body feeble and unfit for work and mind devoid of grace <clears throat> what work will be done by these if i get 10 or 12 boys with the faith of nachiketa i can turn the thoughts and pursuits of this country in a new channel disciple sir so many young men are coming to you and do you find none among them of such a nature swami ji among those who appear to me to be of good caliber some have bound themselves by matrimony some have sold themselves for the acquisition of worldly name fame or wealth while some are of feeble bodies the rest who form the majority are unable to receive any high idea you are no doubt fit to receive my high ideas but you are not able to work them out in the practical field for these reasons sometimes an anguish comes into my mind and i think that taking this human body through and towardness of fortunes i could not do much work of course i have not yet wholly given up hopes for by the will of god from among these very boys may arise in time great heroes of work and spirituality who will in future work out for my ideas disciple it is my firm belief that your broad and liberal ideas must find universal acceptance some day or other for i see they are all sided and infusing vigor into every department of thought and activity and the people of the country are accepting either overtly or covertly your ideas and teaching them to the people Swami ji what matters if it they acknowledge my name or not it is enough if they accept my ideas 99% of the sadhus even after renouncing lust and wealth get bound at least by the desire of name and fame fame that last infirmity of noble mind have not you read 
we shall have to work giving up altogether all desire for result. People will call us both good and bad, but we shall have to work like lines, keeping the ideal before us without caring whether the wise ones praise or blame us. Disciple, what ideal should we follow now, Swamiji? You have now to make the character of Mahavira your ideal. See how at the command of Ramachandra he crossed the ocean. He had no care for life or death. He was a perfect master of his senses and wonderfully sagacious. You have now to build your life on this great ideal of personal service. Through that, all the other ideals will gradually manifest in life. Obedience to the Guru without questioning and strict observance of Brahmacharya, this is the secret of success. As on the one hand Hanuman represents the ideal of service, so on the other he represents Leonin craze striking the whole world with awe. He has not the least hesitation in sacrificing his life for the good of Rama. He is supreme indifference to everything except the service of Rama, even to the attainment of the status of Brahma and Shiva, the great world gods. Only the carrying out of Sri Rama's behest is the one bow of his life. Such wholehearted devotion is wanted, playing on the Kohl and Kartal and dancing in the frenzy of Kirtan has degenerated the whole people. They are in the first place a race of diseptics and if in addition to this they dance and jump in that way, how can they bear the strain? In trying to imitate the highest sadhana, the preliminary qualification for which is absolute purity, they have been swallowed in dire tamas. In every district and village you may visit, you will find only the sound of the coal and kartal. Are not drums and uh, are drums made in the country? Are not trumpets and cattle drums available in India? Make the boys hear the deep toned sound of these instruments. Hearing from boyhood the sound of these affirminate forms of music and listening to the kirtan the country is well nigh converted into a country of women what more degradation can you expect even the poet's imagination fails to draw this picture the dumru and horn have to be sounded drums are to be beaten so as to raise the deep and martial notes and with mahavira mahavira on our lips and shouting hare hara Yom Yom, the quarters are to be reverberated. The music which awakens only the softer feelings of man is to be stopped now for some time. Stopping the light tunes such as Kheel and Tappa for some time, the people are so are to be accustomed to hear the Dhrupad music through the thunder roll of the dignified Vedic Hyman's life is to be brought back into the country. In everything, the austere spirit of heroic manhood is to be revived. <coughs> In following such an ideal lies the good of the people and the country. If you can build your character after such an ideal, then a thousand others will follow. But take care that you do not swerve an inch from the ideal. Never lose heart in eating, dressing or lying, in singing or playing, in enjoyment or disease. Always manifest the highest moral craze. Then only will you attain the grace of Mahashakti, the Divine Mother. Disciple, Sir, at times I am overcome by low spirits. I don't know how. Swamiji, then think like this, whose child am I? I associate with him and shall I have such weak mindedness and low, lowness of spirits? Stamping down such weakness of mind and heart, stand up saying, I am possessed of heroism, I am possessed of a steady intellect, I am knower of Burma, a man of illumination. Be fully conscious of your dignity by remembering, I am the disciple of such and such who is the companion in life of Sri Ramakrishna, the conqueror of lust and wealth. 
this will produce a good effect he who has not this pride has no awakening of the Brahma within him have not you heard Ram Prasad's song he used to say whom do I fear in the world whose sovereign is the divine mother keep such a pride always awake in the mind then weakness of mind and heart will no longer be able to approach you Never allow weakness to overtake your mind. Remember Mahavira, remember the Divine Mother and you will see that all weakness, all cowardice will vanish at once. Saying these words, Swamiji came downstairs and took his accustomed seat on a court in the courtyard. Then addressing the assembled sannyasins and brahmacharins, he said, Here is the unveiled presence of the Burma. Fie upon those who disregarding it set their mind on other things. Ah, here is the Brahma as palpable as a fruit in one's palm. Don't you see here? These words were spoken in such an appealing way that everyone stood motionless like a figure painted on canvas and felt as if he were suddenly drawn into the depth of meditation. After some time, the tension of feeling passed and they regained their normal consciousness. Next, in the course of a walk, Swamiji spoke to the disciple. Did you see how everybody had to be concentrated today? These are all children of Sri Ramakrishna and on the very uttering of the words, they felt the truth. Disciple, sir, not to speak of them, even my heart was overflowing with an unearthly bliss, but now it appears like a vanished dream. Swamiji, everything will come in time. Now go on working. Set yourself to some work for the good of man, sunk in ignorance and delusion. You will see that such experiences will come of themselves. Disciple, I feel nervous to enter into its labyrinths, neither have I strength. The scriptures also say, impenetrable is the path of karma. Swamiji, what do you like to do then? Disciple, to live and hold a discussion with one like you who has realized the truth of all scriptures and through hearing, thinking and meditating on the truth to realize the Brahma in this very life, I have no enthusiasm nor perhaps the strength for anything else. Swamiji, if you love that well, you can go on doing it and speak your thoughts and con conclusions about the shastras to others. It will benefit them so long as there is the body one cannot live without doing some work or other. Therefore, one should do such work as in as is conductive to the good of others. Your own realizations and conclusions about scriptural truths may benefit many a seeker after truth. Put them into writing which may help many others. Disciple, first let me realize the truth when I shall write. Sri Ramakrishna used to say, without the badge of authority, none will listen to you. Swamiji, there may be many in the world who have got stuck in that stage of spiritual discipline and reasoning through which you are passing without being able to pass beyond that stage. Your experience and way of thinking if recorded may be of benefit to them at least if you put down in easy language the substance of the discussions which you hold with the sadhus of this mutt it may help many disciples since you are wishing it i shall try to do it swamiji what is the good of that spiritual practice or realization which does not benefit others does not conduce to the well-being of the people sunk in ignorance and delusion, does not help in rescuing them from the clutches of lust and wealth. Do you think so long as one jiva endures in bondage, you will have any liberation? So long as he is not liberated, it may take several lifetimes, you will have to be born to help him, to make him realize the Brahma. Every jiva is part of yourself, which is the
rational of all work for others as you desire the whole hearted good of your wife and children knowing them to be your own so when a like amount of love and attraction for every jiva will awaken in you then i shall know that the brahma is awakening in you not a moment before when this feeling of the all round good of all without respect to caste or color will awaken in your heart then i shall know you are advancing towards the ideal disciple sir it is a most tremendous statement that without the salvation of all there shall be no salvation for an individual i have never heard of such a wonderful proposition shivami ji there is a class of vedantists who hold such a view they say that individual liberation is not the real and perfect form of liberation but universal and collective liberation is true mukti of course both merits and defects can be pointed out in that view disciple according to vedanta the state of un- individualized existence is the root of bondage and the infinite intelligence through desire and effects of work appears bound in that limiting condition when by means of discrimination that limiting condition vanishes and the jiva is bereft of all adjuncts then how can there be bondage for the atma which is of the essence of transcendent intelligence he for whom the idea of the jiva and the world is a persisting reality may think that without the liberation of all he has no liberation but when the mind becomes bereft of all limiting adjuncts and is merged in the brahma where is there any differentiation for him so nothing can operate as a bar to his mukti shivami ji yes what you say is right and most vedantins hold that view which is also flawless in that view individual liberation is not barred but just consider the greatness of his heart who thinks that he will take the whole universe with him to liberation disciple sir it may indicate boldness of heart but it is not supported by the scriptures swami ji was in an abstracted mood and did not listen to the words after some time he said day and night think and meditate on the brahma meditate with great one pointedness of mind and during the time of awakeness to outward life either do some work for the sake of others or repeat it in your mind let good happen to jivas and the world let the mind of all flow in the direction of brahma by such a continuous current of thought even the world will be benefited nothing good in the world becomes fruitless be it work or thought your thought currents will perhaps rouse the religious feelings of someone in america disciple sir please bless me that my mind may be concentrated on the truth swami ji so it will be if you have earnestness of desire it will certainly be chapter 39 swami vivekananda's plan to celebrate durga puja at belur math his visit to the temple at kalighat place the math belur year 1901 at the time the belur math was established many among the orthodox hindus were want to make sharp criticism of the ways of life in the math hearing the report of such criticism from the disciple swami ji would say in the words of the couplet of tulsi das the elephant passes through the market place and a thousand curs begin barking after him so the sadhus have no ill feeling when worldly people slander them or again he would say without persecution no beneficent idea can enter into the heart of a society he would exhort everybody go on working without an eye to result one day you are sure to reap the fruits of it again on the lips of swami ji were very often heard the words of the gita a doer of good never comes to grief my son 
in May or June 1901, seeing the disciple at the Math Swamiji said, Bring me a copy of Astra Vimastri Tattva, 28 categories of Raghu Nandan at an early date. Disciple, yes sir, but what will you do with the Raghu Nandan Smriti, which is the present educated India calls a heap of superstition. Swamiji, why? Raghu Nandan was a wonderful scholar of his time, collecting the ancient Smriti. He codified the customs and observances of the Hindus, adapting them to the needs of the changed times and circumstances. All Bengalis following the rules laid down by him, but in the iron grip of his rules, regulating the life of a Hindu from conception to death, the Hindu society was much oppressed in matters of eating and sleeping in even the ordinary functions of life, not to speak of the important ones. He tried to regulate everyone by rules in the altered circumstances of the times that did not last long. At all times in all countries, the Karmakanda, comprising the social customs and observances, changes forms. Only the Jankanda endures. Even in the Vedic case, you find that the rituals gradually changed in form. But the philosophic portion of the Upanishads has remained unchanged up till now. Only there have been many interpreters, that's all. Disciple, what will you do with the Smriti of Raghunandan? Swamiji, this time I have a desire to celebrate the Ruga Puja. If the expenses are forthcoming, I shall worship the Mah Mahamada. Therefore, I have a mind to read the ceremonial forms of that worship. When you come to the mat next Sunday, you must get a copy of the book with you. Disciple, all right, sir. Next Saturday, the disciple brought a copy of the book and Swamiji was much pleased to get it. Meeting the disciple a week after this, he said, I have finished the Raghunandan Smriti presented by you. If possible, I shall celebrate the puja of the Divine Mother. The Durga Puja took place with great accolade at the proper time. Shortly after this, Swamiji performed a Homa before the Mother Kali at Kali Ghat. Referring to this incident, he spoke to the disciple, Well, I was glad to see that there was yet a liberality of view at Kali Ghat. The temple authorities did not object in the least to my entering the temple, though they knew that I was a man who had returned from the West. On the contrary, they very cordially took me into the holy precincts and helped me to worship the mother to my heart's content. Chapter 40 The last birthday anniversary of Sri Ramakrishna that Swami Vivekananda saw Swami Vivekananda's ideas as to how the celebration should take place, how fair a guru can help, how far a guru can help, what is meant by grace, Swami Vivekananda's vision of Sri Ramakrishna placed the Balur Mat year 1902. Today is the anniversary celebration of Sri Ramakrishna, the last that Swami ji ever saw. The disciple presented an invocatory hymen on Sri Ramakrishna to Swamiji. He then proceeded to rub Swamiji's feet gently. Swamiji, before starting to read the poem, spoke to him, Do it very gently as the feet have become very tender. After reading the poem, Swamiji said, It is well done. Swamiji's illness had increased so much that the disciple observing it felt so at heart. Swamiji's understanding his inner feeling said, What are you thinking? This body is born and it will die. If I have been able to instill a few of my ideas into you all, then I shall know that my birth has not been in vain. Disciple, are we fit objects of your grace? If you, without taking my fitness into consideration, bless me, then I, I will consider myself pleased.
Swami ji always remember that renunciation is the root idea. Unless one is initiated into this idea, not even Brahma and the world gods have the power to attain it, attain mukti. Disciple, it is a matter of deep regret that even bearing this from you almost every day, I have not been able to realize it. Swamiji, renunciation must come but in the fullness of time. Kalinatmani Vinduti, in the fullness of time, one attains to knowledge within himself. When the few sanskaras of previous life are spent, then renunciation sprouts up in the heart. After some time, he said, why should you go outside and see the big concourse of people? Stay with me now and ask Niranjan to sit at the door so that nobody may disturb me today. Then the following conversation took place between Swamiji and the disciple. Swamiji, I think that it will be better if from now the anniversary is celebrated in a different way. The celebration should extend to four or five days instead of one. On the first day there may be study and interpretation of scriptures. On the second, discussion on the Vedas and the Vedanta and solution of the problems in connection with them. On the third day there may be a question class. The fourth day may be fixed for lectures. On the last day, there will be a festival on the present lines, just as the Durga Puja extends for four or five days. Of course, if the celebration is on the above lines, none except the devotees of Sri Ramakrishna will be able to attend on the other days except the last. But that does not matter. A large promiscuous crowd of people does not mean a great propagation of the message of Sri Ramakrishna. Disciple. Sir, it is a beautiful idea. Next time it may be done according to your wishes. Swamiji, now my son, you all will carry them out. I have no more inclination for these things. Disciple. Sir, this year many Kirtan parties have come. Hearing these words, Swamiji stood up holding the iron bars of the window and looked at the assembled crowd of devotees. After some time, he sat down. Swamiji, you are the actor in the divine leela of Sri Ramakrishna. After this, not to speak of ours, people will take your names also. These hymens which you are writing will afterwards be read by people for the acquirement of love and knowledge. Know that the attainment of the knowledge of the Atma is the highest object of life. If you have devotion for the avatars who are the world teachers, that knowledge will manifest of itself in time. Disciple, sir, shall I attain to such knowledge? Shivamiji, by the blessings of Sri Ramakrishna, you shall attain to divine love and knowledge you will not find much happiness in the worldly life disciple sir if you condescend to destroy the weakness of my mind then only there is hope for me swamiji what fear when you have chance to come here you shall be free disciple with great entreaty you must save me and life from ignorance in this very life. Swamiji, say, who can save anybody? The Guru can only take away some covering veils. When these veils are removed, the Atma shines in its own glory and manifest like the sun. Disciple, then why do we find mention of grace in the scripture? Swamiji, grace means this. He who has realized the Atma becomes a storehouse of great power making him the center and with a certain radius a circle is formed and whoever comes within the circle becomes animated with the ideas of that saint that is they are overwhelmed by his ideas thus without much religious striving they inherit the results of wonderful spirituality if you call this a grace you may do it 
disciple is there no other grace than this swamiji yes there is when the avatar comes then with him are born liberated persons as helpers in his world play only the avatar has the power to dispel the darkness of a million souls and give them salvation in one life this is known as grace do you understand <clears throat> disciple yes sir but what is the way for those who have not been blessed with the sight of him swami ji the way for them is to call on him calling on him many are blessed with his vision can see him in a human form just like ours and obtain his grace disciple have you ever had a vision of sri ramakrishna after his passing away swami ji after his leaving the body i associated for some time with the pavahari baba of gazipur there was a garden not far distant from his ashrama where i lived people used to say it was a haunted garden but as you know i am a sort of demon myself and have not much fear of ghost in that garden there were many lemon trees which bore numerous fruit at that time i was suffering from diarrhea and there no food could be had except bread so to increase the digestive powers i used to take plenty of lemons mixing with pav hari baba i liked him very much and he also came to love me deeply one day i thought that i did not learn any art for making this weak body strong after living with sri rama krishna for so many years i had heard that pav hari baba knew the science of hatha yoga so i thought i would learn the practices of hatha yoga from him and through them strengthen the body you know i have a dogged resolution and whatever i set my heart on i always carry out on the eve of the day on which i was to take initiation i was lying on a cot thinking and just then i saw the form of sri rama krishna standing on my right side looking steadfastly at me as if very much grieved i had dedicated myself to him and at the thought that i was taking another guru i was much ashamed and kept looking at him thus perhaps two or three hours passed but no words escaped from my mouth then he just disappeared all on a sudden my mind became upset seeing rama krishna that night so i postponed the idea of initiation from pav hari baba for the day after a day or two again the idea of initiation from pav hari baba arose in the mind and again in the night there was the appearance of sri rama krishna as on the previous occasion thus when for several nights in succession i got the vision of sri rama krishna i gave up the idea of initiation altogether thinking that as every time i resolved on it i was getting such a vision then no good but harm would come from it after some time he addressed the disciple saying those who have seen sri rama krishna are really blessed their family and birth have become purified by it all of you will also get his vision when you have come here then you are very near to him nobody has been able to understand who came on earth as sri rama krishna even his own nearest devotees have got no real clue to it only some have got a little inkling of it all will understand it afterwards the conversation was thus going on when swami niranjana nanda knocked at the door the disciple rose and inquired who has come swami niranjana nanda said sister nivedita and some other english ladies they were admitted into the room sat on the floor and inquired about the health of swami ji after a few more words they went away then swami ji said to the disciple see how cultured they are if they were bengalis they would have made me talk at least for half an hour even finding me unwell it is about half past two now and there is a great gathering of people on the outside swami ji understanding the disciple's mindset just go and have a look around but come back soon so i end this video here next video we'll start with chapter number 41
page 294 thank you for watching this video please like comment and share the video and subscribe the channel thanks a lot namaskar my dear friends